Hey guys, it's Danny. I just wrapped up another Facebook Live video where I made this beautiful kale, pomegranate, and delicata squash salad. So I'm just gonna upload it here like I've been doing for all of my people here on YouTube who are not on Facebook, just so you can get all the extra tips and recipes that are in those videos. So I hope you enjoy. Talk to you soon. Hello, my clean and delicious friends. How are you guys? We just finished shooting some videos for YouTube and I said, we are committed to one Facebook Live a week and so we're gonna get it in. We are not organized enough to tell you when. They are just on the fly, but here we are and if you're able to join me, I am super excited to have you here. So um, as always, as you guys come on, please come down into the comments below, say hello, let me know who's watching, where you're watching from, and you know, any thoughts, questions, comments as we go, throw them down in the comments. Um, I'm gonna be setting up my phone as well so I can see them come in, but let me just tell you what we're gonna be doing today. I thought fall is in full swing, autumn is in the air, so I wanted to tackle some fall ingredients and show you some really simple ways to work with some of my personal favorites. So I'm doing kale, pomegranate, and delicata squash. So let me get on here. Make sure my volume is down. Kale. Okay guys, make sure you say hello as you pop on. We have Peggy from Arizona. I'm gonna turn my volume down. I'll put my phone here for now. And while people are coming on, I'm gonna go in the fridge and show you what we shot for um, Facebook, to, I mean for YouTube today. You guys are gonna be getting this recipe in the next week or two. Um, homemade kind bars. So it's um, nuts and seeds with the dark chocolate and a little bit of sea salt over the top. So you guys are gonna be getting this recipe in about, not next week, the week after. So stay tuned. We just did that video today. I'm super excited about that one. Uh, let's see who's out there. We have Hannah from Australia again. Hey, Hannah. Austria. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Austria. Germany, have, Greece. I see Julia from Portland, Oregon. We have Paula from New York City. Jen from Boston. Vanessa from Nashville. Julia's excited for those bars. I know. I was so giddy about it too. I mean, you guys know I cook all the time, but there's something about those like DIY recipes. They take a little extra work, a little extra love, but. I don't know, it's very exciting. It tastes exactly like a kind bar. I'm very excited to show this with you. Got my timer on. Okay, let's chat about what's happening, okay? First thing I wanna talk, I asked, so I asked you guys, I asked on Snapchat and on Instagram, what did you guys wanna see? A lot of people wanted to see fall seasonal ingredients and a lot of people wanted to see winter squash. Now, here's the thing with winter squash. A lot of winter squash, they are big, they are cumbersome, and they can be difficult to work with, and I think a lot of people think they're intimidating, like spaghetti squash and butternut squash and kabocha squash and acorn squash. Um, and while they're all amazing and delicious, um, this little unknown guy, not as familiar, Shoshana from New York. Hello, Shoshana. I love seeing you guys pop on here, come alive with me. So this little guy is called a delicata squash. And the reason I wanted to do this with you guys today is because I think this is a great beginner's winter squash because it is just as delicious as a butternut squash, but it's so much easier to work with. So it's a great beginner squash. You're gonna get all the same fall flavors. You're just gonna be a little less wrestling involved. So let me show you how to do this, right? They all look just about this. When you buy them, they should be hard on the outside, um, no big blemishes, no soft spots. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna come in, I'm gonna trim off the bottom. This is really the same way I work with pretty much any winter squash. It's just a little bit more manageable because this guy's so small. And then you trim off the top. Now that you've got a flat surface, which I really don't, so I'm gonna trim a little more. Okay, once you have a flat surface, which I'm still not achieving, you can stand it up straight. And you do wanna make sure you have that flat surface, especially if you're new to like working with your knife or working with these squash, because I don't want anybody cutting themselves, okay? So you're gonna stand it up straight like so, and then you just take your knife over the top, you're gonna to put the weight of your knife and your body over the middle of the squash, and you just kinda of seesaw back and forth until it starts to go, and then straight down, and it comes right in half. Hello's from Slovenia, Europe. Amazing, hello, and thank you for joining me in making this world feel like we can all come together and be so close. I'm gonna grab a spoon and I'll show you what to do with those seeds. Okay, so 
just like pretty much any winter squash, when you get inside, you're gonna see these little seeds with a little bit of this membrane all around them. Now, just like pumpkin seeds, you can save these seeds and roast them in the oven. Super easy to do. You just salt, pepper, olive oil, roast them at about 425 until they're golden and fragrant, okay? But to remove them for our sake today, we're gonna get inside and you just literally scoop them out just like so. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So all of that, anything that's kind of dark orange or looks a little slimy, that comes out. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put these in my garbage bowl for right now. But like I said, you could save them and roast them. Okay, Effie Tall, hi lady. I see that you're on there. Um, okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with this with this half. Okay, so you just scoop them right out. So really, if you think about it, if you've ever worked with a butternut squash before, um, it's a very or a spaghetti squash. It's a very similar process, but this guy's just small. I'm curious, have any of you ever worked with a delicata squash before? Is this new to you or are we doing something tried and true? I'm curious. Now, once you've got them cut in half like this and you've got them hollowed out in the middle, they're pretty much ready to go. So what I like to do is I flip them skin side up and I, I cut them into like, I'll say half inch, half inch, half moons, right? So you just go just like this, right over the top and down. The flavor of this squash, I would say it's sweet, it's nutty, it's a little earthy. It's probably not as sweet as a butternut squash, but dare I say, I almost think I like the flavor better. I know butternut squash is like the darling of winter squashes, but I'm kind of a fan of this guy here. Okay. Who's out there? Jen. Jen loves delicata. Yeah, I love it too, Jen. It's, it's so good. And here's the thing. A lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, what are different ways that you can work with it? This is like sometimes when these fresh seasonal ingredients come about, instead of trying to transform them, I say transform them. I say just enjoy them in their natural beauty, you know. Roast them up like I'm going to show you how to do now. Just eat them as is or serve them on a salad. Keep it really simple. Um, so what you would do with these is... What kind of knives do you use and like? Lacey, I'm gonna come back to that in a minute, okay? I've got my trusty old um, rimmed baking sheet. You just toss them on there. And all you, I'm gonna do is season this with a little bit of olive oil, just a drizzle. You could even do cooking spray if you prefer. And then salt and pepper. Truly guys, it doesn't need much more. Although I do find that winter squash like this, they love a little bit of um, curry. It's, just, it's a good combination. Just the littlest bit with the salt. So if you wanted to do a little something different, you could do that. Now let me show you, could our timing be any more perfect right now? Let me show you what's that's happening. Okay, I'm gonna put this in a 425 degree oven for 12 minutes and then I'm gonna flip. But look at this, my oven is going off because before I came on with you guys, I got one started. See this? So these have been in for 12 minutes and I'm just gonna flip them over and put them in for another 12 minutes on the opposite side. Okay, they're already tender. Um, and they will continue to brown as they cook because really the fun of roasting them is that you get that rich, deep, golden color on the skin. Okay, so. I'm gonna flip some and leave some because, quite frankly, out some still, we haven't really got it yet. It's gotta go back in. Um, but one tip that you need to know um, is delicata squash, you eat the skin. So make sure that you rinse it before you cook it because the whole thing is edible. I'm gonna throw this back in and then we'll, we'll taste it later and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so that's going back in for another 12. We're, we're, we're rooting to get that golden color. Okay, set. 12 minutes, done, we're done, we're moving on. So delicata squash, guys, here are your takeaway points. A fantastic beginner's winter squash. It is small, it is easy to work with, it's sweet, it's nutty. I think it really rivals butternut squash. I think I would almost say the flavor is better. So it's definitely easy to work with. So that, in my book, gets a big thumbs up. And my kids love it, and you can eat the skin. So um, let's see, who do we have out there? Nels says, hey Danny, look, you look awesome. Thanks, Nels. 
Lexi, Lexi from Alabama. Lacey's asking about my knives. Most of my knives right now are Wustoff, Wustoff. Honestly, years, I'm talking years, I've had these knives for 10, 12, 15 years. I've just got them when I was married, I got them as gifts, and then I used to teach cooking classes when I used to live in LA back in the day, and so I bought a bunch for my students, and I've really had them since. So I love them, I think they're great knives, but there's probably other great knives out there that you could get a little bit less um, expensive that would be just as good. That's something I should dive into and research. But that knife is the San... San yes, so the, yes, so this particular one is called the San... I always say it wrong. Santuco or San... Santuco. Santuco. Santuco, and what that means, it has these little ridges here on the side. And where most knives, let's just chat about this for a second, like a good old fashioned chef's knife like this, this is designed to kind of rock. So as you, you would put, you put the tip down, you kind of push it away. It's designed to rock when you chop like this. Hi, Daphna. Um, hello, Brenda from California. Can you also eat acorn squash skin? Yes, if it's tender enough and you like it, you can. It's usually not as tender though. So, I mean, is it edible? Yes, is it super enjoyable? Not usually. Okay, this knife on the other hand, these little, it's designed to be more of a up, down, up, down, up, down. I find this knife, to, again, to be a good beginner's knife. But either way, that's its own video. Danny, can you do a video on a well-stocked kitchen? I, yes, that's a great idea. That's a good one. Yes, we should do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a note of that. Okay guys, so now we're moving on to kale. I'm gonna show you guys this salad that honestly my daughter invented, Katie. She, it's a kale and pomegranate salad. She really did come up with this recipe on her own. Um, all I'm gonna do, recommended for cutting into a butternut squash. Recommendations. You know, I have a video on that. I will link to it down below um, after we're done with this live. It walks you through all of the steps. You do it carefully, <laughs> you have a sharp knife, um, and, you, and you're patient, but those are the biggest tips when cutting through a butternut squash. But I'll share my video so you can see that. So kale, guys. I have a, this kale has been washed, and I wanted, this has been stem and chopped up, but I wanted to save a few, just to remind you guys how easy it is to work with your kale. So you get your kale, it has this big, thick stem up the back. That needs to be removed. I actually chopped the ends. I should have left it to show you guys, but you would just hold the bottom of the stem and pull up and away and see how easily that comes off. Then you have your stem and you have your leaf, right? So for the sake of the salad, I'm not gonna be using this stem. I'm gonna put this over here. Okay, I'm gonna do it again with this. Now, <clears throat> I think when it comes to kale, when you have, this, this head of kale that I have here, guys, is amazing. It is so fresh and so tender. It's local and I think that makes a big difference because Kale is one of those ingredients when you have it fresh and you and it's kind of fresh from the farm, it's it's so delightful. I think sometimes when we get like old bitter kale that you can't bite into, that's where kale gets a bad reputation from. Um, we're getting kale that's probably traveled for miles and miles and miles, and it's not super fresh, and let's just say it's no longer shining its brightest qualities. So if you can buy some local kale. I would highly recommend it because you're going to get a more tender, more delicate, sweet kale. A lot of people think kale is bitter, but a good kale really has a sweetness to it, kind of like a grass, like a sweet grass. Okay, now because this is already very tender, we don't need to do the next step, but I'm going to do it anyway because I want you guys to see if you're new to working with kale and eating it raw, the way to make it really tender and delicious is to massage your kale before you eat it. Maybe many of you have heard this tip before. So you can take your salt, and I'm just gonna take a pinch of salt and sprinkle it right on top of the kale, right? This kind of works as an abrasive. And then you could either squeeze it with lemon or drizzle it with a little olive oil. I'm gonna do the olive oil just because I have it next to me. You're basically, you need some type of liquid, something wet, right? Then you put your hands in and you literally, you just start to like massage. And watch exactly what I'm doing. In my hand, and what I'm doing is I'm holding it and then I'm pushing it with my thumbs and my fingers in the opposite direction. So you, what you do is you break those little membranes down on the outside of the kale so it becomes more tender and it also brings out the sweetness of the kale. Ashley, hi Danny, watching from San Antonio, Texas. Thanks for all your tips. Oh, thanks so much for joining us, Ashley. Thank you for being here. Lacey's asking, how do I sanitize and clean my wood cutting board? 
I actually have a video on that too. It's like 10 year old, a 10 year old video. But in a nutshell, what I do is I sprinkle baking soda on top of it. That's another good Facebook live, right? I sprinkle baking soda on top of it. And then you take a lemon, you cut it in half, squeeze the lemon juice over your board and then use it as a sponge and scrub the lemon juice and the baking soda with the lemon half and you will have the world's cleanest wood cutting board. And, it, and it's great because you don't really have to get it wet because if you know, if you have a wood cutting board and you wash it with water all the time, it dries out and then you really have to oil it more often. Okay, so can you see how the color changed in this kale? Come here. Okay, you can see how it turned like this bright, vibrant green. Here's a little piece from before. Okay, so this is before we massaged it and this is after we massaged it. I mean, it even looks more appealing, right? This makes the kale much more, just makes it sweeter, it makes it much more palatable. So great tip, especially if you have friends or family who are like, ew, raw kale, teach them this little, this little trick. So you got to give your, your kale a little love. You got to give a little massage, you know, warm it up. I'm going to rinse my hands. Okay. So that's the base of the salad. Easy peasy. And then we put the, I put the pomegranates into the salad and into the dressing. So what I do, first I'm going to show you my favorite way to, to get my seeds out of the seeds out of a pomegranate. Have you ever heard anybody say, oh, when you're buying like pomegranates or certain, make sure that they feel heavy for their, for their size. So I have a lot of people say to me like, what does that mean? I don't even know what heavy for the size means, right? So literally all that means is like when you pick it up, it's surprising because you're like, oh, I didn't think it would be that heavy, right? That's really all it means. And why do we want it to do that? Because that means it's juicy, right? So if you pick up a pomegranate, it feels like really light and airy. It's probably not gonna be juicy. So you want it to be nice and heavy for its size, and then you know you have some good juicy pomegranate happening in there. So here's my favorite way to work with them, okay? You get your pomegranate on your board. Valerie is sending me love from California. I am sending it right back to you because I love, I love California and I love you. So score your pomegranate. Okay, so what that means is you're gonna just break the surface of the skin, but you're trying not to break the seeds. And the whole point of this process is not to make a hot mess because if you've ever worked with pomegranates before, they are messy and they stain. So if you get them on your board or if you get them on your t-shirt like I am on my board there, they are gonna stain. So try just scoring without breaking the seeds. Then you get yourself a bowl of water. Michelle, I have a healthy gumbo recipe on my website. I'll have to link to that later too. Okay, then you take this, you put it down by your water so no juice is squirting at you or all over your beautiful kitchen, and you just gently pull it apart. Don't you try to make me look bad on live video here. You just get your thumb in there, it'll come out. Okay, see how that comes right out? Let me do it again just to prove to you that this method really does work and I'm not crazy. Okay. Then, instead of doing this and having your juice fly over, you do it right in front of, you just do it right in the bowl. This, my friends, is a great job to give to the rugrats. If you have any beautiful little children running around, as you many of you know, I have a five and a seven year old, put, they always wanna help, put them to work. This is a great job and honestly, it takes a hot minute, so you keep them busy for a while. So they're helping and day out of your hair. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, let's see, you seriously, one handy change eating habits and food routines. Ah, you guys are awesome. Love from Cold Cal Cal Calgary. It's snowing already? Stop it. Oh my gosh, we're having the most beautiful fall day. And guys, guess who I'm going to see tonight? I'm not going to tell you. Let's see, I told the, if you follow me on Snapchat, I told you already. Guess who we're going to see tonight? Go ahead, I'm not gonna tell you. Guess who I'm going to see today? I'll give you a hint. She's the queen. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, come back to these for a second. I'm not gonna do the whole thing because I did it already. So as you see, you do it in the bowl, easy peasy. All, all of this stuff floats to the top so you can scoop that out and then you can literally just drain this bowl into a fine mesh strainer like this and it will catch all your seeds. So it's, it's a very, easy process to do. Nowadays, they sell these aerials, that's what they call them, the aerials, um, in the grocery store already done for us, like they do with so many ingredients. But I've said it once, I'll say it again, 
when it comes to cooking and eating, it's time or money, time or money. If you've got the money, then you go get the pre-prep stuff, call it a day. If you have the time, then you get your hands dirty and you do it yourself. No judgment here, my friends. However you get it done, you get it done. Okay, let's set that aside. Now I'm gonna show you about the dressing. Thank you, Brenda, you are welcome. Oh, Cindy Love, Brenda, yes, my friends, I'm going to see Beyonce. We were supposed to see her like a few weeks ago and they um, postponed it because she had a sore throat. Uh, but tonight, and it's the most beautiful day and I cannot wait and we're gonna be working all day and as soon as I finish this, I'm gonna get my kids. And so it's just, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. Oh, wow. I'm trying to think of a song. I can break into for you guys. I don't want to scare you. Okay. <laughs> um, where is it? Looking for. Looking for like a prop. Okay. Salad dressing. Here we go. I got all distracted with Beyonce, guys. Anybody out there love Beyonce? Okay. While I'm doing this recipe, I want you guys to go in the comments below and tell me what is your favorite autumn ingredient. I'll let you pick two because I, you know, it's very hard to pick one. One favorite autumn ingredient. Loretta, so personal watch, watching live. I know, I love doing this live stuff. Anne Marie has a question, she's up there about the juice. What happened to the lovely pomegranate juice when you open that in a bowl? Well, the idea is, I'll tell you what, what the idea is. That's our squash, let me get the squash. Let's chat about the squash in a minute. I'm gonna talk about the pomegranate juice. When I cut into the pomegranate, the whole idea of scoring the pomegranate is that we don't cut the aerials, so there's not a lot of juice. That's why you just wanna score the skin. If you actually cut into the skin, then you break those aerials, then the juice starts to flow. So if you just gently score and then pop it open, no juice is a flowing because you didn't break the aerials. The aerials are the seeds that have the juice, right? The seed is like on the inside. See that white thing? That's the seed. So if you pop this aerial, you'll see the seed. Oh, there's the juice. See, the juice is in the arrow, but that's the seed. Funny story about these pomegranates. When my daughter was two years old, she stuck one up her nose, and because it's porous, the seed, it just kept growing and growing and growing. And you know how I finally got it out? First of all, I Googled it, because we were about to take her to the emergency room. And this is actually a good tip to know if you guys have young kids. So it was stuck up in one nose, what you do is you cover the other nostril, so the empty nostril, then I put my mouth over her mouth and blow as hard as you can. And you blow like your life depends on it because you're like, that's my baby girl. And you blow as hard as you can and that pomegranate seed came flying out of the other nostril. And then my husband and I went for margaritas. <laughs> okay, let's get this dressing done. Um, Pumpkins and apples are my favorite fall ingredients. Oh, Cheryl, me too. Oh, fresh nutmeg. Pomegranates and kale for sure. Then Jen, you are watching the right video. Okay, I'm gonna compose myself because there's so many things I wanna talk about. Let's finish up the squash, shall we? Mm -hmm. Here's our squash, the finished delicata squash. And you can see that after 12 minutes on each side, see this golden brown color we got? And you guys know with the cool air, like this is what it's all about, roasting, getting the deep flavor out of these beautiful seasonal ingredients, right? Like look at this, and it, it's, it's so tender. I'm gonna take a bite, Jeff. It's so tender, even the skin is so tender. Sweet, nutty, oh, that is good. You guys have got to try this if you had it. And like I said before, eat it, enjoy it simply just like this, or use it to top a salad. It's a beautiful fall topper. Okay, let's get this dressing going. Here's what we're doing. I don't remember what I'm doing. I'm doing red wine vinegar, olive oil. Okay. Whenever I do vinaigrettes, I always do um, one to one. Traditional vinaigrettes, three parts oil, one part vinegar. Danny Spee's vinaigrettes, one part oil, one part vinegar. I love that combo. It's a little tart and it's a little bit lighter and I find it to be, it's not just Listen, I, I cook clean and delicious, right? And I want to eat healthy, but how want my food to taste good? So I promise I'm never going to try to sell you guys on something that's healthy that doesn't taste good. Like, I promise you, one to one, tastes good. Try it for yourself. So here we go. Quarter cup of each one. Can you see the measurement there? Oh my God. 
Did I go way past? You're supposed to be looking. Okay, sorry. My nine-year-old daughter, Jillian, makes her own clean and delicious videos, and she calls herself Danny. Oh my God, I love her. Tell her to come live next time so I can say hi to her. Is she in school right now? My daughter is in school too. All right, we went a little further, but that's okay. One-to-one, -one, basically, so there we go, the one-to-one. -one. Now this dressing couldn't be any easier. So I've got one-to-one -one oil vinegar. Then I take a clove of garlic, because God forbid I make anything that doesn't have garlic. Um, Michelle, it is a great parenting tip, I'm telling you. Like, we were panicking. And then I was like, you know what, let me do what I do with everything else in my life and Google it. <laughs> and there was my answer. Okay, so your garlic goes in. You're gonna season this with salt and pepper. Just a pinch and a pinch. And then, this is where the salad gets fun. I have a white onion. White onions tend to be sweet. They don't usually have a bite on them. And I like them for raw, eating them raw like this. So, <clears throat> you're just gonna take half of a white onion Take the peel off of the outside. I'll show you my favorite way to cut up an onion right now, guys. What kind of vinegar did I use? I used red wine vinegar. Red wine vinegar, very simple. You could do an apple cider vinegar. You could do balsamic if you wanted to go a little sweeter. You could do fresh lemon juice. Any citrus, you know, will do. So you see this? Cut your onion, guys. Hand goes over the top. Fingers stay open so everybody's safe. Slowly slide in and across, in and across in the cross, in the cross. Then you're gonna come back over the top and make those cuts horizontally, vertically, horizontally, the other way. And over the top, and now you've got this beautiful fine dice. I really just want a couple of, no, about three or four tablespoons, so we'll do it, we'll go for it. And then what I do is I take my onion and I add it right into the vinaigrette. You watching? Yes, my friend. Just like that. Okay. And then, this was my, again, my daughter made up this recipe. She was cooking with me in the kitchen one day, and I was like, you tell me what you think we should put in here. And then this was kind of what she came up with. Granted, I did, like, steer her away from ketchup and something else she wanted to put in there. So, you know, I was, I was being a good mom. I was guiding her, I was guiding her. But I was, I, I, you know, more or less she came up with it. <laughs> At least that's what she likes to tell people, so I go with it. Okay, so you stir that all in. You've got this yummy, hearty dressing. And then what I like to do is get, oh, it's not gonna be here. Where's our, where's our long white platter? It's either in the dishwasher or over there. Well, that is not good. Okay, so in a perfect world, you wanna get yourself a nice long platter to serve this salad because it's so pretty and it makes for such a great Super. presentation. Super. I'm looking around because I feel like it's gotta be here somewhere. Let's do this. Um, let's minimize it. We'll make it small on this platter. This just has my onions and ginger and stuff on it, so it might, let me give it a rinse, sorry guys. Bang, talk to the people. Okay, so let me tell you, this is the deal with Facebook Lives. We have committed to doing one a week, guys, but he, my husband, I don't know if you guys know this, but he, is, he does voiceover for a living. And so we never know what his, and he also works, we work together on Clean and Delicious. So I never know what his schedule is gonna be, which is why I can never commit to a time. It's like we never know until the day of, and that's why they're always on the fly like this. So thanks for always being so flexible with us. So here's what I like to do. I stirred my onions in there, then you take your pomegranate seeds and you put them in your dressing as well, okay? And you just mix them up. Now remember, we already kind of tenderized and flavored our kale with that little bit of olive oil and salt. So take your kale, now, ah, you dropped my bone. Sorry. That's okay, okay. So you take your, your platter, and I'm gonna make a mini one here for you guys since I couldn't find my big platter. And this is a beautiful presentation too, like if you're having friends over or if you just want to make a beautiful dinner for your family or for yourself. Okay, so you do this, see how beautiful. And then you're gonna take that salad dressing and you're literally, I'm gonna get a spoon, you're gonna spoon it over the top. Okay, watch this. 
Okay, look at the colors. I mean, can you even? Can you even? The white and the red. Yeah. This is like, it's such a holiday. This would be a great Thanksgiving salad. And the onions really throw it over the top, actually. Yeah, and my husband thinks the onions really throw it over the top. I pre appreciate that. I think so, too. I mean, how gorgeous is that? Beautiful. It is beautiful. And now, just for the record, guys, if you... This salad is done. That's how I usually do it. But if you should have yourself some del roasted delicate squash like we have right here, Christina from Miami's in the high house. Hi, Christina. What you're going to do is what I'm doing right now, and you're going to take those beauties and you're going to lay them over the top. And like your salad's going to go to a whole nother level and you're going to blow your own damn mind. Look at this. I'm blowing my mind because I wasn't planning on doing that. Oh my gosh. Can you? Guys, pretty for Christmas too. I would have to agree with you. So we worked with three beautiful autumn ingredients here today. Not only do we work with them, but we brought them all together into one beautiful dish. Because remember, one of my favorite sayings, and you gotta keep this one for yourselves, what grows together, goes together. All of these ingredients grow in the same season and they all taste good together. And that is a general rule of thumb when you're trying to work with fresh, um, seasonal ingredients, anything that grows in the same season is going to taste great together. So if you're at the grocery store and you're like, oh, I don't know what works, or I don't know what's going to taste good together, just run with it. If it's if it's in the same season, it's going to taste good. Um, let me see if I see any comments or anything that I want to get to. How do you spell the squash? Delicata. It's up in the description above, but D-E-L-I-C-A-T-A. -A, delicata squash. Looks amazing. Scares me. I've never tried one, but this makes me want to. No, no. Listen to me. That's what I'm telling you, Shauna. This is what I'm telling you. This squash, the delicata squash, is the perfect beginner winter squash because it's little and it's totally manageable. So it, I, I'm not trying to throw you in the arena with a butternut squash. This little guy is so doable. Um, I need some soup ideas using kale. I have a bunch on my website. Anytime I cook pumpkins, they go super dry in the oven. How can you avoid that? Well, my first question to you, are you buying regular big pumpkins or are you buying sugar pumpkins? A lot of people try to cook with big, regular sized pumpkins and it, they don't work. If you're buying little sugar pumpkins and they're drying out, then you might want to check what temperature you're cooking them at, number one. And number two, are you maybe cooking them too long? That's what I would be wondering. Yes, Tracy, you can eat the skins on these, 100%. Mmm, delightful. Delightful. Okay, before I wrap up, I'm gonna give a couple reminders. I posted a new video on YouTube today, guys. It's called Motivation Versus Intention, and it's directed towards health and weight loss goals. And I share a personal story in there that I recently had. So I'm gonna share that on Facebook so you guys can be sure to check that out if you're interested later. And we'll be back on Facebook Live one day next week. We don't know when, it's always a mystery. But if you have any thoughts or suggestions of what you want to see me cooking live here, I would be more than happy to hear you out. Um, okay guys, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. This was a blast. I will see you back here soon in the clean and delicious kitchen on Facebook Live. Bye guys. Are we not live? Smile. Are we on? You're on. We're live. Hello.